Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim29, back again for another Fool's Gold review. And this time we are going to, or this time I'm going to be reviewing Justice League issue 60 by Brian Michael Bendis. But only the Justice League story, not the backup story, which is actually pretty good. So, time to move to how Fool's Gold works, especially if you're new to this. Uh, Fool's Gold works, to which you see there's a currency conversion here, that links to how much I paid for it, so 4 dollars making it eight ninety five Australian, but in it I address how much I think the cover is worth, the art is worth, and also the story is worth, and they still get ratings out of 10, plus how much I think they're worth afterwards. So starting off, does this cover in any way help in the shaping of what is happening within the story? Or does it reflect what happens within the story? In some part it does, but not fully. And what do I mean by not fully? You understand when I start to cover the area of the story. So the cover rating for this is 6 out of 10. To which I believe it's worth a dollar twenty-five. Now to move into the internal art, starting off with the beginning, then moving into the middle, and then finally the end. This is some of the art around the beginning. Some of the art around the middle, and I've got a small criticism here but I'll address that when I get to the story don't get me wrong I really enjoyed the art in this book and Tamara Bond villain I really enjoy her artwork in fact I enjoyed some of her artwork in an indie comic run by the name of Wayward so you might want to go check that out okay now to move towards the end and this is some of the art towards the end. I must admit, I really did enjoy the art in this all the way through, from beginning to end. To which I gave the art a 7 out of 10. To which I believe it is worth a dollar fifty. Now to move on to the story. Now to those who might not follow my channel, I like to enjoy certain things being covered in my stories number one cast is it easy to identify the cast in this issue it actually was and it was really nice and it really worked good with the story of course we had black adam green arrow um batman superman black canary hawk girl the flash or oh, Barry Allen Flash, Naomi, who is a creation of Brian Michael Bendis' and Walker's, uh, Brutus, Hippolyta, and I think that's about all, uh, providing I'm reading it right, according to my terrible story, right, um, terrible writing that I've got covering the review of this issue. Uh, in it, we also covered the locations uh, another thing i enjoy seeing in comics because locations are also a part of the characters and it might indicate where they live or what they 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 could even be visiting that area in a story so in that we got the location of port oswego in oregon to which naomi lives which is really nice we got the jl uh, the Justice League Headquarters, uh, Central City, Femskira, to which Hippolyta was coming from, and of course, the Hall of Justice, to which the Justice League meet, meets up. Another thing that I like being pointed out in stories is, was there any indication of time, uh, uh, any indication of time? Surprisingly, 
there was, and I really liked what happened within the story. So there is a big improvement happening here within this Bender storytelling. Um, and word it, and one of the next things was comic references, or references that the reader might need to know, especially if they might be interested in wanting to read up, and read up about a character that they might want to pick up. And surprisingly, there was, and that was for his character of Naomi, to which it made reference to Naomi Volume 1, Season 1, as it's called. I don't think it should be called Season, but he writes more for the TV screen than more so in the comic. Don't get me wrong, he can actually do some good stories. Ron Michael Bendis, I highly recommend checking out his powers over this. Uh, even United States versus Murder Inc. You might enjoy Scarlet as well, that's another one of his properties. So, how did Brian Michael Bendis go here? Well, now I can finally address one of the areas of the story to which I think it felt like it was put the wrong way around and it could have been heaps better. And it links to the timing of where it points out eight minutes ago. Alright, this is the area where it starts off. And it's got to do with Hippolyta, and it's she's turned up from Femiscira to Central City. And she's going to tell this oh, the story of what happened at Femiscira in her encounter with Brutus. I think this could have been done differently. In other words, I think Bendis should have put the fight at Femiscira first. And he could have set that in the present. And I think that would have worked really well within the story because it was really good to see a depth of a new character uh, which he has created, but also has connections to Zimbardo, another creation of his. And he looks like he's of the same species, which is another thing which I don't think anyone else has pointed out yet. Uh, if they have, I might have missed it. I think if that was swapped around, my story rating for this would have been higher. So, what did I give this story rating? Well, surprisingly, I gave it the, the same as the last issue. And I really enjoyed that Brian Michael Bendis, he must have been working really well with the editor um, that was over him, because with what I see here, of the things that I enjoy seeing in my story, uh, they're all big pluses. I mean it, they are all big pluses. So if this story happens to hit around a 7 to an 8 and a half, and this is just within the first arc, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, but only for this title though, because he's got Checkmate coming out soon. And that will have to go through the Fool's Gold treatment because of what he went through with Event Leviathan. That too also went through Fool's Gold. As to see if his storytelling actually picks up or it goes around in circles. Like years in the wilderness. Even if it's like 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> My goodness. In some cases, some stories can be like that. You can feel like you're lost in a wilderness. So, story rating is 5 out of 10, to which I believe it is worth $1, giving an overall total of $3.75.
Well, it's not quite reached the 895, but it's slowly getting there. Well, until then, please don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.